How is this? Yeah. Let me minimize. I have to open up here again the Acrobat. So now I'll be able to share it. Yes, it works now. So welcome everyone to that great study. I think it is. I, I've seen that more people is joining the, the room right now. So let me just open my screen a little bit more. Yep. So we have stopped on the item 56 last weekend. As I like to remember, please help me out, participate in the study, share your doubts, your questions, your experiences. This is what makes a study a study. Otherwise, it's just a lecture or an audio book, if you like. So it's better to participate. And like that, we can learn with one with another. The form of the Pele spirit. Yeah. Yes. Uh, remember that last week we we did some lesson that we left some lesson before or is is for I, I think it was not so large no not the way the medium book sorry it's my my fault there yeah. we go. <laughs> but it is in line with what we're going to do here and do you remember the question Elsa the yeah your mic is closed but uh, the the question was can we lose our Paris spirit? So do not answer here because that's for another study, but we can talk about that here anyway. Uh, well, we can talk about that here too. So I, I think it'll be positive, but let's go through the topic, through the lesson. And then in the end, let's see what you guys think. The form of the Paris spirit is the human form. And when it happens to us, when it appears to us, it is usually in the same form by which we knew the spirit during its physical life. That is why we might believe that the pale spirits, even when disconnected from all the components of the body, must have somehow modeled itself after the body and retained its form afterwards. We have to, uh, I don't remember if it's written here in that sequence, but we have to remember that the Paris spirit is the blueprint of our physical body. Everything we have in our physical body comes from a blueprint, means from a, has a, an origin, has been drawn somewhere. It has been, the drawing is the Paris spirit. The blueprint is the Paris spirit. So if you do have eyes, ears, heart, things like that in our physical body, the origin is our Paris spirit. Okay. Such does not appear to be the case, however, except for some differences in detail and the organic modification that are required for the environment in which the being must leave, the human form is the same for all inhabitants on all globes, at least according to the spirits. So he's uh, expanding even the notion of human forms beyond our globe, okay? I will not focus on this one, but he's giving clearly the, in the information that we do have beings like us elsewhere. And it is also the form of all discarnated spirits who only possess the Peru spirit. It is also the same form by which the angels or pure spirits have been represented down through the ages. He's making a reference of all the information received over the centuries when we talk about spirits they all being shown with that form therefore we must conclude that the human form is the typical form for all human beings no matter what degree of hierarchy they belong to 
forever. The petty spirit, subtle matter, is not that persistent or inflexible as the body compact matter. Yeah, that's Christine. Hi, Christine. Um, hi. Um, that last um, body of information that you just read out, could you also include in that that it's um, where it says it's all inhabitants on all globes, it, could that also mean that it's um, in different dimensions as well? Is that what it's alluding to? Yes, this is my understanding. Yeah. But depending who you ask, we'll say no. No, he's only referring to people on earth. Like, But my understanding is that all beings and spirits are also beings, right? And are human beings. But without the compact matter, uh, he says here on the, on the line. But if when we die, do we change who we are? Do we change the species by any chance? No, we remain human beings. So I, my understanding that sentence is everywhere, applicable everywhere. There's something I would like to highlight here. Inflexible is the physical body. The petty spirit is flexible, but a lot of people think is flexible without any limits. I can change everything when I want as I think, and I have difficulties to accept that because this is beyond logic, right? So, but uh, in the future, we'll be talking about that. We can apply some flexibility to the Paris spirit depending on our evolution. Very unlikely, we all, when we die, we all have the same conditions to do something that like Jesus can do, for example, right? There's a hand here. Uh, I'm with you. Hi, <laughs> you This is a very fascinating topic. I mean, I, I like very much this, um, you know, uh, idea of a human form and uh, the peri spirit. And we shouldn't forget that the peri spirit is fluidic, it's made out of fluids. And the fluids, not as dense as we find them in, in the physical world, but in the spiritual world and the peri spirit, it's more flexible. And it depends on the willpower and the development of the spirit to be able to, you know, manipulate these fluids. I think that's why, you know, the spirits at our level can't expand that much, can use this flexibility of the very spirit that much because they haven't managed to do that yet. Mm -hmm. But we, we know that, you know, how we manipulate fluids, it depends on, on our knowledge and our development as well. And we know that willpower and intention and so on are very important to, you know, to manipulate the fluid. And the perispirit is fluidic. It's made out of, you know, subtle matter, not dense matter. I, I like to say, Munir, that uh, a lot of spiritists, they are romantic spiritists. They like to hear what they want to hear. They always like uh, a nice end on the end of the book or something like that, right? And... I'm concerned that some people that only wants to see from that direction, they may be surprised when they find on the other side that they cannot fly, they cannot change what they want when they think, they cannot build anything just because they thought about it, because they want to. So there is a difference between the level we are, our environment, our globe basically, and what can happen very far from where we are, right? And a lot of people mix what is very high on the, on the 21st floor and what is on the ground floor. We are on the ground floor. When we die, we remain on the ground floor. Our abilities will not boost just because we want, just because we believe. So we need to maintain that perception that things are not always like what we think or what you'd like to. Of course, I would like to fly everywhere. Of course, I would like not to work and think and create something just by my thought. But it's not like that. Yeah, and the spirits, what they say is the general case, what is possible to do. 
but not what everyone can do at this moment, you know. Correct. So there are the particularities. They wouldn't go into every single case to say, well, this one can't because of that, but that one can. No, they give the general possibilities, ideas that what is possible or can be done or what can happen, but not that it will happen for everyone at the same time in the same way. Correct. I have another two hands. I think Liz was first, so go on, Liz. Hello, everyone. Um, I think one example of this flexibility of the peristeric could be um, in the appearance that certain spirits choose to um, present themselves. For example, Emmanuel, um, he presented himself in a certain way to um, Chico Xavier in relation to the many incarnations that he had and you know his experiences he chose that particular appearance but he was able to do that i i come to what you said Guilherme, about the level of evolvement and moral evolvement uh, of everyone and um i think that could be a good example of um flexibility of the, the perispirit it is, it is a good example, but as we said here, I, I really believe that the minority of the spirits around us has this capacity. <coughs> Sorry. The great majority won't change a thing. Will only be what they are. They cannot fake what they are not. So I, that's the, my line of thought. So now we have Charles. Hi, Charles. Bonjour. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, even. Uh, yes, so the, the, the French word for this inflexible is rigidité, which is, uh, I don't know if uh, the word in English correctly. Uh, the, 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 we cannot change the form of our uh, physical body. Uh, I want to have a bigger head. I'm not able to change this type of things. The maximum what my spirit is able to do is <laughs> to influence uh, maybe negatively for some illnesses or positively for curing the illness. Huh? So because don't remember, we must remember that the sec this section is talking about the action of the spirits on the material world. So that's why Kardec is talking about the spirits. But he's just, uh, when we are incarnated, of course, uh, the form of our sp spirit is somehow giving the form of our physical body, which is not uh, flexible, huh? uh, which is more rigid. Uh, and then with regards to the different appearance, I think it's just the next lines that we will read right now, which will explain it very clearly. Mm -hmm. And you, you brought uh, to our attention something that uh, sometimes it is a concern. When we do translate something from the original to any language, we need to be very careful with the translation and the meaning of the translation. Regardless that inflexible or rigid, rigidity can give the same idea, does not have exactly the same meaning. So it, it is a concern. Imagine in another hundred years time when people decide to change everything again, trying to translate again to a different language and so on, we may start to lose, lose a little bit of the original information. Yet, yet, Guilherme, we have uh, the Kardec original cast in concrete, and we have also the Dictionnaire de l'Académie Française, uh, which was valid at that time, also cast in concrete. So we always can come back to know exactly what was Kardec meaning when he was using that word. Correct. Then, of course, we need to change. In France, we cannot. We cannot change the words. We can maybe put some footnotes, but uh, for the translation, of course, you can use the actual word. Mm -hmm. Correct. And to those that are thinking, I don't have access to the originals. Yes, we do have access to the originals through the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. Yes, Kardecpedia as well, and it's everywhere. And this dictionary, you can download it also from the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, Gallica, for free. So it's just a matter of wanted to. <laughs> Very nice. 
we might say that it, it is flexible and expendable. And that is why the form it assumes, though an exact copy of the body, is not absolute. It is molded according to the will of the spirit who can give it any appearance it wants, whereas the physical envelope confronts it with invincible resistance. With what we know today, this sentence is not wrong, but it is incomplete, right? So I had a question from a friend that here in this room before, we were having a conversation about spiritism in, in the SSL premises. And he asked me, is this information wrong? That was in one of the Tardex book. I said, no, the information is not wrong. The information is correct based in the time it was answered, based with the knowledge at the time and the context. We need to think about the context about when the question was made and when the answer was given. But we, what we know today, we can say sometimes that the answer is incomplete. And my own perception is that this sentence here with what we know now is incomplete. Disentangled from the obstacle that had repressed it, the perispirit expands, contracts, or transforms itself in other words. It lends itself to all sort of metamorphosis according to the will that acts upon it. It is thanks to this, this property of its fluidic envelope that the spirit can make itself recognizable when necessary by take on the exact appearance that it had during its physical life and even display the very same physical defects that could serve as signs for recognizing it. Is that information correct? Yes. But we could elaborate a bit more. I would suggest to read Andrea Luis. Evolution in two worlds is also a good source of information to help to understand and to expand this sentence as well. There is another book called Paris Spirits from Zimmerman. He's also very good to expand this sentence, right? And Paris Spirits is flexible, is flexible until certain point, until certain moment when we are incarnating, when we are discarnating, there are some mechanisms that is not the goal of this study, but is very positive. I, I would recommend people to try to dig in to find this information. Hi, Sandra. Good morning. Oh, hello. Good morning. Um, sorry, Guilherme. Here it says, according to the will that acts up upon it. So according to the will. So I'm not, I didn't understand quite well this part of the. It is saying here that when the spirits wanted to change the appearance, it may change. Appearance of the petty spirit, it may change. As an example, Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but some spirits can change. Some spirits know how to do it. It's not everyone, right? So that's why I'm saying we can expand what is written here. Is right? Yes, is right. But we can expand that notion. So. A lot of people, when they read something like that at will, they start to think that we can do everything at will. And this is not correct. This is partial. Hi, Munir. Hi, Graham. Just using an example. If someone asks, can human beings run a marathon? Yes, they can. Can we run a marathon right now? No, I we can't. I, I can't. <laughs> I can. I have the you know possibility to run if I prepare myself to do so. But you know, at this moment, I couldn't. You know, I, I couldn't die. run around the block. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I think when when they say you know they say in that general sense, yes, it is possible. Yeah, it can be done. But you know, not for everyone right now. Mm -hmm. I, I had something like, before I let Ebony talk, something came to my mind here. I was having a conversation with a spirit friend 
in one of our encounters. And a spirit friend, right? Not a spiritist, spirit friend, a discarnated spirit. And he was talking to me, do you really think we are always knowing everything behind the trees, spying on every single human 24 seven? Don't you think I have something better to do? <laughs> so sometimes we, we think they have magic powers, but they don't. Remember, they are human beings. They have some different characteristics, but they, they're still human beings with activities, responsibilities, duties. And sometimes they, they are not what we think or what we would like to. Hi, Evelyn. Good morning, everyone. Um, with regard to spirits changing their peri spirits by will, um, I've read in some of Andre, I don't remember which book or books, but there were cases um, on the negative side where spirits who are very intelligent but morally backward um, who are able to uh, present other spirits uh, or make other spirits present themselves um, using uh, well, under different forms, for example, like animals. Um, and it's because they're under magnetic domination from those who are more intelligent. So um, they're not able to do it themselves, but under the will of someone more intelligent than, them, than themselves and morally backward, they're able to present themselves in ways that are not very dignified. Um, can you speak a little bit about that? I will speak about the mechanism. The mechanism exists in life. The mechanism can be used for good or to evil, like magnetism. You can use magnetism to help people or to hurt people. You can use what we know, what you learn here on the spiritism to help people or be exactly the opposite. So, Everything that exists on earth or on the spiritual world follows a universal law. The law is exactly the same. How we're going to use is up to us. If I have the knowledge how to manipulate fluids, magnetism, and to deeply convince a creature that they are something else, I can do that for good or for evil. So yes, it does exist, right? The mechanism is present in nature, can be used by anyone. If they bother to learn, if they bother to study and to practice, and it can, in, in that instance, in that example you gave, Ebony, it does happen more often than we believe. But thankfully, a minority of spirits know how to do it. Imagine if any not evolved spirit had that power to change everyone into anything. It would be a mess, really. It would be very difficult to live with because they want it, they can change. It's not like that, right? So there is an hierarchy on the spiritual world like we have here. That hierarchy exists for good and for evil. That hierarchy quite often is the person who are the, uh, acquire knowledge of how to handle things. It's exactly the same as what we do here, but we do for good and they do for something else. So it does exist. And the process to reverse the situation is not easy. Need external support, need external help. And the, the Lecture the literature of spiritism has a lot of cases like that. Don't need to be only on release, there's a lot of more. The spirit can lose its form, its human form, and to the point that lose all forms. And that's what we call avoid avoidization. Basically, you lose your parent spirit, right? That, that shape, the human shape. I don't want to answer you guys here what I asked in the beginning. <laughs> oh dear, I'm, I'm selling myself cheap here. 
and uh, but yeah. Guilherme, could I also um, put within that, that obviously all of us are subject to the laws of cause and effect. And if uh, this is able to happen, it is going to be within those laws of cause and effect. And as in our, um, as more and more we study here or, you know, when we study the spirits book, when we study the gospel, when we study the, the wider literature of spiritism through Andre Luis, through um, Joana de Angelis, Manuel Filomen de Miranda, lots of these authors, um, Leon Denis, we understand that the way we think and how we feel about ourselves in life is going to have a great effect on our perispirit. So that is a good food for thought, I, I believe. Uh, Liz, everything we do has a reflection in our physical body and our physical body will reflect in our perispirit. Likewise, Anything we do to our petty spirit will reflect in our physical body. So that that's a that's a let's say that's a law, a nature law of nature, right? To come to to try to tie what you said with what Ebony asked, asked uh, to go to that situation where I'm losing my petty spirit's form is not fast. Is not from a day to another. You need several situations to align, to allow that to happen. It doesn't matter if I know, if I study, if I'm practicing, it doesn't matter. It's my actions, it's my moral elevation, right? If we study, we'll have a better condition to evolve morally. If we practice charity, we have a better position to claim, if you like, right? Charity is not a salvation. Charity is what changes our heart. Our heart has to be changed. And that is the final goal. So if I'm doing that, it will be more difficult to come to that scenario, right? But even if I do possess a lot of study, a lot of knowledge, but by one mistake, I fell into a deep depression. I fell into a deep remorse. Depression is not the right word. A remorse. You don't need to be depressed to be a remorse. If I'm going to a deep remorse, and then I have my karma that we, we also brought that word into the spirit of karma. And then I have friends from the past that will claim something that we did before. So we have a lot of things to align to have that to happen. But why I'm saying that? I don't want anybody to be scared of it. So I'm Oh, that can happen to me tomorrow. No, it's not like that. But with so many things aligned in the same direction, it can happen to anyone, right? In any moment of evolution. It do not mean that the spirit is, the spirit is regressing is, because the spirit may be idle, but they will not reverse its evolution. But it can be idle for some time, and then in the future, you start to move back back again. Any questions about this subject before we move on? I guess not. Now everybody is scared. Though. <laughs> Hence, his spirits are beings like us, comprising a population around us that is invisible and it is in its normal state. We say normal state because, as we shall see, this invisibility is not absolute. Okay. Let me talk a little bit about that here. When we are in the spiritual world, now we, I believe we know and we agree that we remain as human beings, right? We now understand that we lost our physical body and we still have our body. 
I couldn't quite well say that my petty spirit is my physical body to my spirit. But to, to avoid mismatch of words and mismatch of understanding, we are not used to say that. We say, we call that a spiritual body. But for the spirit himself, is exactly the same as our physical body to us. They need the pair spirit to interact in the environment, period. So when you go to a mediumship meeting, you don't hear a spirit saying, well, I had that spiritual body that's not what I thought it was and is doing something, no. My body is doing that. My body hurts, my body aches, my body is bleeding. They still have a, a spiritual body with the very same characteristics as we do. And as we all know, it is also matter. It's not exactly the same as our matter, but it's matter nevertheless. Talking about matter, uh, last, this week or last week, we got a massive picture from uh, it's James Webb satellite about dark matter, something we never had before. A picture was taken from the dark matter. So something that we thought that was nothing, we could take a picture of nothing. So this is just to give you guys a little bit of input of how things we perceive today may be expanded tomorrow. So if I had moved in the, into the time to a hundred years ago and said to someone, we take a pic, we're just, I'm just showing to you a picture from the dark matter. He would burn me for sure, because I would be something connected to the devil or whatever. So things are expanding in a speed that we never had before. So we need to follow that speed as well. So let's move on. What time is it? Oh, still have time. Let's move to the item 57. Let us return to the petty spirit for now, since it is essential for the explanation we are about to give. We have stated that although the petty spirit is fluidic, it is nevertheless comprised of a type of matter. So here we go. That's not me talking, right? It's Kardec validating what the spirit says. That makes tangible apparitions possible, a matter to which we shall also return later. It's very interesting uh, apparitions on uh, materializations. Under the influence of certain mediums, we have seen hands appear that bear all the properties of living hands. Warmth, tangibility, the resistance typical of a solid object, and the ability to hold onto onlookers, onlockers, sorry. Only to suddenly vanish like a shadow. The intelligent action of such hands which obviously obey a will in performing certain movements, even playing tunes or musical instruments, proves that they are visible component of an intelligent, invisible being. I have a person that uh, I'm still dealing with him almost as daily basis. He's 96 years old and he participated in materialization meetings. We don't have many nowadays, but we still have sometimes. Uh, the last one I heard was in La de Frey Luis in Brazil, but I'm, I'm not sure if we still have somewhere else. So on those meetings with the right preparation, with the right characteristics of mediums, and the spirit can have temporarily the physical form like we do, right? Pictures are taken, they even perform surgeries into some people. But that's another topic. So just to let you know, guys, that regardless the time that the book was written, at that time we had more events. We still have some events like that nowadays. The tangibility, the warmth, and the sensorial impressions they produce 
even so far as they leave visible marks on the skin, as we have witnesses, to deal painful slaps or delicately caress, to prove that they are comprised of some kind of matter. Moreover, the ability to instant, instant, instantaneously disappear show that this matter is extremely subtle and behaves like certain substances that can alternately pass from the solid to the fluid states and vice versa. At that time, we had a lot of those scientists that did not believe in spiritism in the first place, trying to prove what people were reporting to, like materializations, things like that. So we have groups, we have so many important names for the spiritism and for the science at the time that they were studying mediums, proving that was a reality. Nevertheless, people did not believe. So, part of life. The action of the spirits of Ometa continues. The inmost nature of the spirit per se, that is, of the thinking being, is entirely unknown to us. Let me make just a quick remark here. We can talk a little bit about perispirit, that is the spiritual body of the spirit. But at Kardec's time and today, we know nothing about the spirit itself. We should not mix the spirit with the perispirit. Perispirit is a body, right? Spirit, we don't know. We really don't know. We have no information. It is what, when we refer to the spirit, we say it is the essence of the being, but that's the little we know. It is only reveals itself through its action, and these actions can only impress our senses by means of an intermediate type of matter. Consequently, the, the spirit needs matter in order to act upon matter. Let me try to explain here. Now that we start to understand that spirit is one thing, that spirit is another, only the spirit cannot act on matter. Only the spirit cannot act on matter. The spirit needs the perispirit. The spirit in possession of the perispirit in certain circumstances can act in all matter, but the spirit in possess possession of the perispirit can act in the matter of the spiritual world. It is its direct instrument for doing so is the perispirit, just as individuals is the body, just as an individual is the body. And as we have just seen, the perispirit itself is indeed comprised of matter. As its intermediate, as its intermediary agent, it has the universal fluid, which is a kind of vehicle upon which it acts as we ourselves act upon the air in order to produce certain effects through dilation, compression, confusion, or vibration. Hmm. I, I, I really appreciate that this topic is complicated and is not easy to observe in the first time. It takes a bit of time to get more familiar with the words, with the meanings, Let's talk about fluid a little bit. We know that we have what we call universal fluid and some people call cosmic universal fluid is the basis for everything that, that is matter. This fluid changes to create everything we know that is matter physical body, our chair, our air, our water, everything. 
the spirit comes from a different source. Okay, so we have two main sources on the universe: the universal fluid, the cosmic universal fluid, and the intelligence that becomes the spirit. That that the spirit is coming from. What? Right? The best way to understand that universal fluid is thinking about water. Everything on earth has water on it to some degree. Water can be hard if you frozen it, can be fluid in its natural state, can be vaporous if we boil it. Nevertheless, the chemical characteristics of the ice, of the water, and of the vapors of water, vapor of water, is exactly the same. So this is your universal fluid. It may change its appearance. It may become something else, but the origin is the same. It is also the same for the spiritual world. The universal fluid has different characteristics. The, the, the physical mat the matter on the spiritual world and the spiritual body has different characteristics from our material world. But it, it is coming from the same origin, from this universal fluid. I don't want to throw too much, but uh, I think it is important to know a little bit of some of those concepts to understand, right? This fluid, this universal fluid becomes, from this universal fluid, becomes our spiritual body. Likewise, from this universal fluid is what becomes, is our physical body become, oh dear, I'm missing English here. <laughs> from, this, from this universal fluid, we'll have the spiritual body and the physical body. Would be much easier in my own language. <laughs> Regarded in this way, the fact that the spirits can act upon matter is easy to accept. One may thereby understand that all effects resulting from such action belong to the order of natural events and have nothing miraculous about them. They only appear supernatural because the cause behind them is unknown. So basically, as soon as we start to understand, we start to study and comprehend how the mechanism works, there's no magic, right? However, once the cause is known, they cease to be miraculous, for the cause can be found entirely in the same material properties of the fairy spirit. This is all to be treated as a new order of things, which a new lab has to come to explain, and at which, before long, no one will be amazed, just as no one nowadays is astonished by a long distance communication which takes only a few minutes by using electricity. I would like to think that one day we'll be able to prove things in the lab, like he's suggesting here. Perhaps, but I also believe that even if you prove in the lab, we may don't want to share what we found and that would take a little bit longer to become uh, common knowledge. One may perhaps ask how a spirit, a spirit with an aid of such a subtle matter is able to act upon heavy and compact objects to lift tables, etc. It would certainly not take a scientist to raise such an objection because without even considering the unknown properties that this new agent must possess, haven't we seen similar examples with our own eyes? Hasn't 
industry discovered the most powerful motives, forces in the most hairified gases and the most imponderable fluids. When we see air at top of buildings, steam, cool enormous objects, gasified blasting powder, blown stones into the air, and electricity split trees and perforate walls. Is there anything so strange in accepting the fact that the spirit is by employing its peri spirit can lift a table, especially when it is understood that this peri spirit can make itself visible, tangible, or unbehave like a solid object. One thing that uh, I used to say quite often is that we want to believe in what we want to believe. I can even see proof of something and I, I still do not believe. And even if I don't have a better answer, if I feel like, well, it is convincing me, but for other reasons, I decide not to contemplate that possibility. Or the reasons could be anything that may tear my world apart, that may tear my belief apart, that may have financial repercussions. So many different reasons that sometimes we decide to ignore what we start to see. Unless Kardec is giving an example here, we have things we are prepared to accept. A balloon, how does it work? Is it hot air inside? Electricity, how does it work? Electrons. You know, we, with that, we are prepared to accept. But I think we still have a long way to go until we are, we, when we talk about we, I'm talking about human race, right? We are prepared to accept openly this beautiful world. There are so many implications there. The day we all realize that life goes on, we have to change. I have to be better people. If I understand and I'm convinced that what I do today, I'll have to fix tomorrow, I'll need to change my behavior. I'll, I'll need to change things in the industry even. So we are not there. We are not there yet. And I believe, I truly believe that one day things will come closer, but still have a long way to go. Well, this chapter is over. Any questions, any comments, anything before we move on? So what is, what's the answer to the question about, um, uh, you know, can we lose our um, peri-spirit? I suppose the answer is you can't, is that right? No, the answer is yes, we can. Oh, you can? We can. And. I have a lot of people now turning noses because I said we can. A lot of spirits turning noses because I'm saying we can. But we have the answers in Kardec and in the spiritism. But as I like to say, we like to see what we like to see. And from there, sometimes we create like a shield preventing all the information to come across. Let me bring something for you guys here, Genesis. And the Genesis man is here to help me out. <laughs> uh, we are very happy to accept that from to one spirit to move from one planet to another, I need to lose my peri spirit from Earth to acquire another peri spirit. Am I right? I see some heads nodding there, so yes. So, is the first topic to think about it. I lose my parent spirit. When the spirit evolves, it do not need the same matter, the component, the component material things we need as a spiritual body anymore. It loses the parent spirit. 
to the point that our high elevated spirit to come to give messages in a lower zone, he needs to go to a process like on the mediumship meeting. And that's described by Andrea Luis. And there are other examples that will corroborate with what I'm saying. Even in Andrea Luis, evolution to worlds show us that when we die, in the very moment we are dying, there is a chemical reaction that creates a body, organs, to interact in the spiritual world. I'm not telling you anything from my mind. I'm just saying what is in the book. So when we die, the chemical reaction of the decomposition of our physical body generates organs, body, to allow our spirit to interact in the spiritual world. Likewise, we also have the reverse process to incarnate. To incarnate, we lose our flexibility of the perispirit, we lose our body, one, one layer at least of the body, to be able to reincarnate. Hi, Maria. Thank you, Amy. Hi, everyone. You know, you touched the point that is a question mark for me is what happens when a spirit moves from one planet to another? I always ask myself. We don't know exactly, you know, what happens in between. We know that wherever the spirit is, it draws from that planet, that region. It draws the necessary fluids to compose the uh, the peri spirit. Mm -hmm. So, not not that we'll take all fluids that are there, but the ones that are compatible to the the, the moral level, the spiritual level of that that entity. But how does it happen? You know, is there anything that remains with the spirit, like, like sort of spiritual innate? And then it draws the rest. We don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's, yeah. you know, there's information somewhere, but um, exactly how it takes place, I, I have no clue. <laughs> the, to, to evolve that conversation, we need to fully understand the difference between a spirit and perispirit. That's the key element, yeah. right? Even the spirit is not just a light. He has a, like a very thin, something that I won't give a name, very thing, something that remain his that maintain his individuality. So there is something we don't know, but maintain its individuality. Right? So we need to understand that we have we are like a, a onion. We have so many layers. Physical body, we peel the first one. Peri spirit, we peel the other one. We can peel things until we come to the very middle. That is our spirit. Yeah, the we spirit, know there's all this transition. Yeah. <laughs> the spirit remains the same. But those pills we leave behind. We leave behind. And I don't want to throw too much information because that would <laughs> go away and people will think, well, now people think I'm crazy, right? People will be sure that I'm crazy. So so but there are more information available to us if we decide to go in that direction and to make ourselves acquainted with that level of information, right? And avoidization is a primary example. The spirit loses its petty spirit's form. It loses. And to regain the petty spirit form is a long process. Sometimes even more than one reincarnation, sometimes even more than Another process I won't describe here, but other process in the spiritual world before even contemplating to incarnate, to try to gain part of this physical, part of his very spirit form again. So it is complicated, but the information is there. What we need to, why I throw that question in, in the balance on Astro City study? Because it is important to people to stop saying no, Think about it first. Look about information. Try to find some information. Try to find information saying yes, information saying no. Analyze that information. You, let's learn how to use our common sense. And then eventually, yes, I don't particularly believe in that. I don't think it makes sense. And I will choose 
the option A instead of option B. But something that happens too often in the spiritism is no, no, no why. Kardak said differently, show it to me, please. And sometimes when we do that, the person has a shock. Show it to me. Well, you know, yeah, I think it's written. Okay, let's find. Let's read together that test. That is your perception of what is written in this test. We need to start to create that mechanism to allow us to understand better what is written and to give us different possibilities from that point. Because it's not because, I don't know if you guys remember, but I said here, I think on the first, first encounter we had here, said, do not believe in me. I will tell you what I saw, what I see, what I study, what I believe, but do not believe in me. You study by yourselves, read, interpretate. What Charles says today is wonderful. You see, we saw a word that was a bit different than was in the original. Go in the, go in the original, check over there. Come. A study is not something that we do in six months time. I'm still studying the, the medium's book for years. I was still trying to learn the medium's book. And every time we put a little bit more of ourselves into it, we find something else. We find a word that we could not perceive the word before. And that word changed the whole meaning of what is that sense, sentence. So we need to create that mechanism to be open to possibilities. And those possibilities only we can create to ourselves, in my opinion, of course. Oh dear, I'm talking too much. Two minutes. <laughs> any question, any comments before we wrap up for today? No. So that was very nice to have you all here today. So we will do our final prayer. I would like to ask Denise, can you do our final prayer, Denise? Yes, you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, yeah. Thank you, my Lord, for the opportunity to be here to discuss all, all these marvelous uh, concepts and amplify our knowledge. Please give us the time and the curiosity to go and explore deeper into these concepts. Thank you very much for the opportunity and we all have a wonderful week. Amen. 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 Very nice to have you all here. You see, when you guys talk, it's much better. <laughs> I didn't see the time going by. So that was very nice. Very nice. So I'm looking forward to see you all in a week time. Thank you, Gil. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bless you.